Joining me now from Philadelphia, President of the Crime Prevention Research Center, John Lott. John, I think the, the White House is on the right track, trying to identify killers before they kill, trying to look at mental illness, because there's a common thread in all these people. You can't be sane. You can't be someone who worships God and commit these acts. That said, when we look at solutions to this problem, it seems as though two obvious ones are ending gun-free zones and actually enforcing the laws that we already have on the books, which sometimes are not. Right. Look, I mean, you look at the proposals that are put out there, and people say they want to go and do something. Well, if, if they really are serious about doing something, then let's do something that would actually change these uh, attacks. So they, the big thing that they keep pushing are these background checks on the private transfers of guns. I wish some media person would go and ask them, Name me one attack this century, one of these mass public shootings, that would have been stopped if you had had that type of law in effect, even assuming it had been perfectly enforced. You know, it just... All right, so, so let's go with that, John. Universal background checks, because we're hearing this bandied about all over the place, and some Republicans are echoing the Democrats' right. call for universal background checks. Your point is made. Uh, that there, there is no correlation to stopping these incidents and increasing the background checks. So why? What is the reason behind this push, the, the political reason, in your opinion? Well, I think the reason is, is just one way to make it more costly for people to own guns. So, for example, in Washington, D.C., it costs $125 to go and privately transfer a gun. It's one way, essentially, to put a tax on doing it. You have background checks now to go and get ammunition in uh, in California there, you know, maybe $70. So you have $10, $11 to go and buy ammunition, and then you have to pay essentially what's a tax of another $70 on top of it to be able to go and get it. It's just they can't ban these things outright, and so they look for ways just to make it more costly for people to do it. But the big thing is they won't fix the flaws in the system. They go and they say three and a half million dangerous prohibited people have been stopped from buying guns because of background checks, but they don't mention that that's false, that almost all of those, 99% of those are mistakes, false positives. They're stopping law-abiding citizens, about three and a half million law-abiding citizens, simply because they have a name similar to somebody that they want to stop you know, forcing them to either not be able to get a gun or to spend thousands of dollars to go and rectify a mistake that the government made. And there's no reason that should be occurring to begin with. But the Democrats refuse to make simple changes to prevent those types of mistakes being made in the system. Part of what you do is you, you research these, these mass shootings and, and you, you profile the shooters. Um, and, and yes, this person in uh, El Paso... Uh, a racist, but he also is a radical environmentalist. And, and the Dayton shooter, we know, uh, worships Satan, but also apparently was going to vote for Elizabeth Warren if he had the chance to do so, also supported uh, Bernie Sanders. But, but a couple of things, uh, and, and, and maybe most important, is that in your research, there isn't always a common political thread among these people, is there? No, the vast majority of these people are apolitical. You have individuals that want to commit suicide, and they want to commit suicide in a way that people will know that they were here. You have over 70 percent of the mass public shooters in the last 20 years that you really can't identify any political views on their part. But, you know, even beyond that, it seems like anytime somebody's a racist, and there are a few of these who are racist, they want to classify that as a right winger. So somebody like the New Zealand shooter, they classified as a right winger. Here's a guy who identified himself as a socialist. He's somebody who the ideal country that he had in the world was communist China. Somebody who was against immigrants because of environmental views. Both he and the El Paso guy had extremely similar views. Both of them wanted to stop uh, immigrants coming into the country because they were worried that if overpopulation was going to damage the environment. And the New Zealand guy was particularly upset about people from third world countries because he complained that they tended to have more children and having more children would go and damage the environment. And so now we have these calls to get these, quote, weapons of war, uh, these assault style rifles off 
the streets and, and out of the hands of, of law-abiding Americans, which a vast, vast majority of law-abiding Americans own these firearms. Uh, haven't we been here before, uh, John? We did have an assault weapons ban at one point. Um, and, right. and from our conversations in the past and the statistics that I remember, there really was no appreciable difference in terms of the safety of our society when we had the ban in effect. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.